Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Vella and I'll be presenting our paper, Networked Gardens, Remediating Local Nature Data Through the Internet of Things. I'd like to thank my co-authors and also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that this research was carried out in, the Turbul and Yagara people. So why network gardens? Well, the UN is estimating that more than half the world currently lives in cities. And by 2050, uh, this will be 68% of the world's human population. And within these cities, private and public green spaces can provide habitat for displaced flora and fauna. Collecting and sharing information about these species can further conservation efforts, for example, through citizen science. And it can also deepen interest in and care for nature. And there is a lot of interest in urban nature. Currently, smartphone apps like the ones I have listed are making the most headway capitalizing on this, mostly through collecting photographic and text-based observations. But there are other ways to collect and share data about the natural world and other forms that it can take. We're particularly interested in what the Internet of Things or IoT can bring to the table. Um, and so by IoT, we're referring to the use of physical, everyday objects, yes, even a toaster, with sensors that can transmit data via a network. This is strongly associated with the idea of smart homes and cities, where the automated transmission of data can enable the surveillance and better management of resources, like even when those resources are people. And everyday people are often left out in the design of IoT systems and the choice of the data that's being collected and shared. So we thought it best to take a grassroots approach to better understand how a community of interest might use IoT for the sharing and presentation of nature data. Specifically, we're interested in what types of media and interaction support an awareness of local nature, exploration of nature data, and invite them to share this. We engage with the concept of remediation to assess how media is used by participants and to rethink how media might be used to express information about nature. Commonly, remediation refers to the act of remedying or fixing, uh, but in terms of media studies, Walter and Grusen describe it in terms of a process by which media reproduces itself in the quest for immediacy. Or in other words, newer media seeks to create an unmediated experience by borrowing elements from old media, but also by increasingly hiding the method of production or the signs of mediation. For example, film remediates elements of stage productions to immerse the viewer in a story, Spotify remediates elements of the jukebox in the presentation and the choice of music. Our study had eight participants and their households. Uh, these participants had a prior interest in nature and in learning about the animals in their backyards. They were given an ambient birdhouse, which I'll describe in a second, um, acoustic recorders, nature cameras, and they were asked to use these devices as they liked. Coordination of the study was conducted through a private Facebook group. And they took part in interviews, diary study, group discussions, both offline and online. And also we logged their use of the birdhouse. And this, these results were thematically coded. So the ambient birdhouse is a wooden casing that looks like a birdhouse. Uh, it houses a Raspberry Pi, a speaker, a touch screen, and an RFID card reader. It plays nature videos randomly throughout the day or night. Specific videos, though, can be assigned by a user to an RFID card, and these cards can then be tapped to the casing to bring up a video at will. Videos can be shared between birdhouses in a network using an associated website in which they can choose the videos to play on their birdhouse or which ones to assign to an RFID card. Commenting on videos is also supported by the website. The touch screen was mostly used passively to view videos, but it could also be used to scrub through a long duration audio that was available on a different channel. And I'll describe that next. So the types of media the project provided included short videos of birds calling, video quizzes, and interactive spectrograms. These are all on the left. And the types of media that we expected participants to share uh, were the ones that they would collect using the nature cameras and the audio monitors, but they also ended up using their own smartphones to collect videos. In the case of the acoustic monitor, long duration recordings were uploaded to the website and a matching visualization was generated manually and then made available as an interactive spectrogram with audio. So looking at these interactions between the media and the devices, you can see that while the smartphones could seamlessly interface with the website, the nature cameras and the acoustic monitors required participants to unload a memory card and manually upload the contents via a personal computer. 
Also, you see the little Facebook icon, there was an unintended collection of media which resulted from the use of the private Facebook group because participants started to use this to upload videos from their phones and also to share photos, which the Birdhouse did not support, and also to share and seek information from the other members of the group. So what did we learn from all of this? Well, I would advise you to read the paper in full, uh, but in brief, we produced this collection of themes relating to our research questions. I'll describe just a few of these. So we found that long duration audio provided a soundtrack uh, to participants' activities. Acoustic surprises were resulting from mismatched temporalities, such as being able to hear a dawn chorus at a more comfortable hour and inside the home. And also ambient audio could make household members more aware of bird calls when they're outside the home. Interesting allocations of effort appeared. Awkward and slow activities such as manually pulling out the memory card and scanning through its contents could become part of a daily routine. And different media produced different privacy risks. The effort of scanning through long duration media to detect private conversations meant that more often than not, this media wasn't shared. But this wasn't a problem for videos. And unsurprisingly, social interactions were quickly relegated to the more streamlined functionality of Facebook. Despite only two people in the group having known each other previously, the group formed fairly trusting relationships quickly through a sense of like-mindedness regarding a care for nature. And this encouraged their sharing and their curiosity about what was happening at each other's locations. The few face-to-face -face interactions in the group, offline and online, noticeably enhanced participation. In summary, there's something very powerful about data sharing in localized, like-minded networks and the types of interactions and the media that people want to share at the community level is much broader than what's currently supported by citizen science applications. They wanted to know each other, learn from each other, and share their care of their gardens and their inhabitants with trusted others in a variety of ways. So how do we make the leap to enable these groups, not just free floating individuals, but groups to contribute to larger and more directed explorations, as well as to learn from professional scientists? Uh, it's possible that media like multiplayer games and other formats that support teamwork may hold the answer. We also found that audio posed some unique challenges and opportunities when analyzing nature data. Uh, these include scale, uh, for example, the use of immersive soundscapes versus short acoustic videos, linking information that conveys contextual knowledge, um, privacy, as noted, particularly when data was collected from populated spaces and analytic interactions, like are there novel ways to annotate group or filter audio without an over-reliance on visualization or screens? IoT data transmission doesn't have to be streamlined to appeal if activities enhance daily routines. Similarly, temporal mismatches between human and more than human activity need to be accounted for, for example, through asynchronous media and presentation. And this is in stark contrast to the current real-time data streaming promise of IoT networks. Indeed, the desire for immediacy can be balanced with slower and more contemplative interactions with local nature data. Thank you.